Hey there, I'm Bex, welcome to my channel. This week I was challenged by my patrons to do some tiny paintings, so I measured out a grid and each of these little spaces is 2 by 2 inches. I thought about trying to go smaller but was a little bit unsure about how much detail I could get in so I wanted to make them really tiny but I also wanted them to look like something so that's where we're at. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to use this as a bit of an experiment and try to do six paintings that look kind of right together. It's not something that I really do. I thought it would be a fun challenge so I decided to paint six different dogs. I deliberately tried my best to pick dogs that all had very different head shapes and hairdos <laughs> and all that kind of stuff and I just absolutely love dogs so I've been really really excited to do this. I have drawn so many dogs in my sketchbook and yeah I, more dogs to come. <laughs> the different breeds I decided to go with were the Shetland Sheepdog, the Bohemian Terrier with that massive fringe right down to his nose, so cute, the Boston Terrier, a Pule, a Chinese Crested Dog and last but not least the Dalmatian. I cannot resist those spots, so cute. <laughs> so anyway Back to the sketches. At this stage I was just kind of messing around, trying to block in the kind of big main shapes, try not to mess them up too much so I could use them as a guide for my paintings. I absolutely love the challenge of drawing all of these different shaped heads. Being totally honest, I don't think these were the best drawings that I did over the days that I was practicing for this video, which is a shame, but at the same time, I still had so much fun doing it. And you know, the other little thumbnails that I have in my sketchbook, there are a couple that I would like to try doing as bigger paintings. And I guess nobody is going to display a two by two painting on their wall. <laughs> I did consider doing these on individual sheets but I didn't think that it would be the best idea because I lose everything. So yeah, simply to keep a hold of them I decided to do them all on the same sheet. I hope that's not cheating. <laughs> they are all masked out and painted individually so I think it's a pass. <laughs> So now that my sketching is finished, I started having a think about what I wanted to do colour wise and my sketchbook came in really handy for this because it gave me an opportunity to test out some combinations and I guess give me a little bit of guidance as to what I was going to do next. I love my sketchbook. <laughs> so for this I decided to have a look at colours and their complementary colours. I picked out a few and decided to combine every colour with its complementary colour and use exclusively those two colours for each painting and white. Um, just to see how it turned out, of curiosity really. I've been messing about with underpaintings in my art a little recently and I was interested to see what could be achieved by using particular colour combinations together and how the warmth and tone of the underpainting would affect the overall painting when it was finished. So yeah, this was a really fun experiment. If you have never tried this out, I totally recommend it. It was a lot of fun and it kind of took the pressure off a little bit. It gave me the freedom to just kind of sit back and enjoy the process without too much pressure and the end result being something spectacular. You know, this was more of an experiment than anything. I mean, my goal was really just to see how these turned out and have a lot of fun with it. It was also nice to not have to think too much about what the end result was going to look like and how happy I would be with it because at the end of the day when you're practicing and you're experimenting that really doesn't matter too much. Overall I actually really enjoyed this painting session and thought that it was very like therapeutic. So at this stage I'm just kind of blocking in the complementary colour on top of that underpainting. I had a lot of fun picking out the colours, what colours to put on top of other ones, what to use in the background. I definitely leaned towards using the warmer tones for the background but I tried I tried to kind of mix that up a little bit but I have to admit I, I do think I kind of played it safe in a lot of ways. <laughs> anyway so yeah with the paintings just blocking in all the colours, paying attention to the values, I definitely could have spent more time on these and pushed them a lot further but I didn't really have enough time to keep going and by the time I was finished I was really tired. 
So they're not really polished to the degree that I wanted them to, but I think each picture is fine and yeah, I mean more than anything it was just a lot of fun. These kind of experiments are more useful when you're approaching, you know, bigger paintings. If I'm doing bigger paintings in the future, I might look at these and see an interesting colour combination or something and yeah, find inspiration from it, but these were never going to be gallery quality paintings, so that's fine. I had so much fun painting the Dalmatian and just doing all those spots. I tried to focus on making the shapes really organic. I didn't want any patterns to appear as such, so I did my best to vary the shapes and the sizes of the shapes and how close they were together and I thought that was a lot of fun actually, yeah, love the Dalmatian. Once I had plopped in most of the main shapes and colours, I really wanted to revisit the backgrounds. Because I used a really thin wash of gouache for the initial underpainting, they, the colours looked a little washed out, I wanted them to be really vibrant and I think darkening them down really helped all the little dog faces pop off the page. And of course adding the highlights from the white gouache also really helped with that and gave them a little bit more dimension. Although the shading in these illustrations isn't very complex, it's quite simple, the colours are quite simple, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out and I think they look quite fun and really cute. Um, let me know which one's your favourite. <laughs> I think the top middle one, the Bohemian Terrier, is probably my favourite. Funnily enough, the one that I was the most worried about painting, I think my sketch was terrible for it. But there's something about that big stupid long fringe that I just can't get enough of. He is adorable. Um, and just on the side I also wanted to say I am very sorry about the quality of this video. I am currently in the process of switching around my camera setup. This was the first time I had used my new tripod and I had stupidly left it on the table which meant that with every brush stroke or little bump or knock the whole camera shook. So I'm sorry for the terrible editing but I tried my best to make it salvageable <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. You will be pleased to know that this will be the last video with the shaky camera situation. Um, so yeah, I hope it has not impacted your enjoyment of the video too much and that you've still enjoyed watching the process. Anyway, on that note, I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I loved doing these tiny paintings. I thought this was a really fun exercise and challenge. I totally see myself doing this again in the future. Maybe even some smaller paintings and some more complex colour palettes. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. Big thanks again to my amazing patrons. You guys are the best. If you would like to check out my Patreon and vote for next month's video, you can find the link in the description below and um, you can also find my socials there if you want to follow me anywhere else and if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe thanks a lot guys see you next time bye